Hello, I'm Rebecca Flaherty and today I'm going to be showing you how to use this trailing floral template to make this pattern here. This particular template is one of a set of six which you can find in my Etsy store, but if you want to have a go for free, you can find this template here in my freebie library and follow along with that one. This is a more advanced level tutorial, so if you've never made a pattern using the diamond method before, then I suggest checking out this video first as it covers everything in more detail and at a slower pace. So let's get started. From the gallery screen here, I'm going to import the canvas and we'll work on trailing floor template number two for this one. So as with all the other templates, these are saved with all the layers hidden as it makes for a smaller file size, but all the layers are still in there, you just need to turn them on. So there's this template that we're going to be using. You'll see that this has got all the same layer groups and the diamond in that you'll be familiar with if you've used any of my other tutorials. The only thing this temp template doesn't have is the texture layers in it. So in this one, we're going to start on our sketch diamond here. This has got just an empty diamond on it. So we're going to start on our sketch diamond layer here and we're going to add a layer above and then I'm going to use a floral stamp to stamp in all the little flowers inside these circles here. So for this one I'm going to use this little daisy shape here. You could also just draw these freehand of course. So I'm doing this on an empty layer to make this a bit smaller. And I'm just going to put these little flowers in on each one of these black circles. Not the blue ones, just the black ones. And these ones here, where they're attached to the pink stems, I'm still gonna add these flowers in on this layer. So don't worry if the stems are pink. If it's the circle that's black, then you add the flowers in on this layer. I think that's all of those in. I'm not gonna bother to sketch out the the stems because we're on the leaves because we'll just follow the pattern for those but if you wanted to make variations to this pattern for example if you wanted to make this curve over there and add another bit going over there then I would recommend sketching that out on this layer as well so once those are all in place and you don't need to move anything around you can merge that down with your sketch diamond now with this pattern because I've stuck to keeping everything inside the circles there's not actually a really huge need to repeat this into the corners because everything is still going to be in exactly the same position, but we can do it anyway. Um, so we're going to duplicate this layer and move this down and snap it into that corner there. We've got the orange lines in the middle and the orange lines crossing there. And you can see we've got all of those flowers now filling these parts down here. So we can do the same with this layer, duplicate that and snap that up into the top left there. Then the bottom layer again, duplicate that and drag it over to the right. And then duplicate that and drag it down to the right. So now those are all of the parts of our pattern filled out. And all we need to do is trace over them in the pattern group now. So that it's not too confusing, I'm gonna change the color of these ones around the outside. I'm gonna alpha lock those and just make them a blue color and then we're not going to get confused over which bits we have to trace over so in our pattern group we're going to trace over all of the black motifs in there so anything any flower that's inside a black circle and any stem or any leaf that's in black dots we draw this in here so I'll turn the pattern group on now you can hide this pattern marker that doesn't need to be turned on it's just there so that you can easily add layers above in this group so on this layer here that we've just added, I'm going to start by tracing the stems in. And I think with these ones, I'm going to make them in this dark green colour. I'm going to grab the tracing crayon from my pattern maker brush set. And in this pattern here, the first stroke that I would make is to start on this flower here, curve this around and then come out to there. This part here is actually going to be the same part we've drawn up here. So we'll draw this in first, bring that a duplicate of that down there and then tidy up this edge to meet up with it. You'll see what I mean as we draw it. So on this empty layer here, we're going to start underneath this flower. Maybe I'll make that a bit thicker. And we'll just trace over this and bring it down here. So this is the first stroke across the canvas where we have something overlapping on these edges. 
So to bring this down to here so that we can join it up, we put a mark up here and a mark down there going off the edges. Then we can duplicate this layer, snap it halfway down and halfway across until you've got those orange lines there. And now we've got a copy of this curve down here. So on the bottom layer, the one we drew, I'm going to go in there and I'm going to erase back some of this line. And then we can draw this in again and get it to merge nicely with that one. I might actually take that up a little bit higher. So there we go, that now blends seamlessly with this line and we know when we bring that one up there eventually that that part will also match up. And with this canvas, the canvas number two, that's the only place where you're going to need to merge seams like that. So the rest of it is just tracing over the lines now. We can delete that duplicated part and then we can just get on with tracing all of these in now. So on this same stems layer, I'm just going to go ahead and draw all of these other little stems in. Right, hopefully I've remembered to draw all of them. Nope, miss these two here. Always, always I'll forget some. And I'm sure I'll find some as I'm going around to drawing the leaves in, which is what we're going to do next. So go down to your pattern layer, add a layer above that, and I'm going to use this lighter green and I'm going to draw in the leaf shapes. And I think for these, I'm going to draw them in a rounded shape at the end, but still really stick into the dotted lines so that I know I'm not going to be crossing over something else in a different part of the pattern. If you were doing like really different leaf shapes, for example, if you wanted to do leaf shapes like that, it would be better to sketch this out and use the sketch layers to move it around the canvas so that you know that nothing's going to be crossing over, especially on these edges here. But because I'm sticking to the limits of these dotted lines I know I'm gonna be okay and then once you have all of your black leaves filled in we can color drop fill those so now we just need to do the flowers so I'll add a layer above the stems we'll do the flower middles I think I'll just draw those in blue for now and I am gonna make these multicolored later so with my tracing crayon again I'm just gonna draw in Actually, rather than my tracing crayon, I'm going to use the mini dot brush, I think. And then I don't have to draw circles. So we'll just put all of these in. And these ones here, the dotted line around the circle is black, so we're going to draw those in on this layer. The stems are pink, so they'll be drawn in this extra group, the pink motifs. But the flowers themselves, they're in a black circle, so they go on this layer. So that's all of those drawn in. Now we need to draw the petals. So let's make the background colour something different. I'm going to stick with this light colour again and go for white petals because we all love daisies. And I think because these are so small, I'm actually going to use my colouring crayon and just draw these in freehand and colour them as I go. We're not worried about these being as perfect as normal. So we'll just hand colour these with the colouring crayon. There we go, there's all of those daisies done in the space of like two seconds on a time lapse and that actually took me probably like 15, 20 minutes in real life. So that's all for all of these motifs in place on this layer. We just need to do these extra bits now on the extra group, which is where the pink motifs go. So to put that in, we're gonna swipe down with three fingers and copy all, turn on our extra group, tap on the extra layer, swipe down, and we're gonna paste that in there. Then we can turn this pattern group off now and the sketch layer as well. And I'm gonna duplicate this layer, snap it over here to the left and then snap this one over here to the right. And then we've got these pink bits in the middle there so we can illustrate them in without having to do weird like going off the edges of the canvas. The only issue is, is it would be nice to be able to blend this in with that part there which we can do by bringing this down from the corner. So we can duplicate this layer, tap to transform, and we're gonna do this, bring it halfway down. So we've got those orange lines there and halfway across, and then duplicate the bottom layer again, 
bring it halfway down so you get the orange lines and then bring that halfway across that crosshair all matches up nicely and now we've got this stem there where we want it if I reduce the opacity on that you can see those are the pink bits that we need to draw in even though they've got blue over the top of them now so we can add a layer above all of these you can merge those three together if you're short on space and with this same green color I'm just gonna draw these extra stems in now don't need to worry about the flowers because we've already drawn those on the main pattern group so there's those drawn in the two stems and we just need to draw this leaf in here so let's add a layer underneath and draw this one in So those are our extra motifs in place now in the pink group. We can delete those two markers, hide that layer and we can go back to adding some colour onto this layer. So to start with I think I want to make all of these little dots different colours. So ideally in terms of like colour editability I would normally put every colour on a separate layer but just to keep this simple what I'm going to do is just alpha lock this layer and I am just going to scribble over and change the colours on it. So let's just scrub the colour and crayon and we're just going to randomise these colours. As I said I would normally do all of this on separate layers but I'm just going to be lazy here. And the way I would do it on separate layers is just put a clipping mask over each one so that I can change the colour of each clipping mask if I want to change up the colours later. But we're just going to go for quick and simple here today. I mean there's nothing wrong with having all of this on the same layer, it just means it's a lot more difficult to change the colours later on if that you decide that that's what you want to do. And I'm also not going to worry too much about whether there's lots of clumps of colour in one place. For example when we move this down here it may be that we've got like two other yellow ones sat there and there. I'm not going to worry about this in this tutorial. If you want to spend more time changing the colours and making sure they're all nicely spread out, then you can go ahead and do that. So I think I'm actually going to leave this pattern as it is without any shading on this one. We'll leave this as just flat colours. So we are ready to build this pattern out now. So to do that, I'm going to duplicate my pattern layer and tap flatten on that move that up to the top I can turn the groups off now and on this extra one if you're short on layers and you don't have enough layers to duplicate a whole group and then flatten it you can get around that by turning everything apart from the group off swiping down with three fingers copy all swipe down again with three fingers and tap paste and that's how to get a flattened version of your group without having to duplicate it. So now we can turn everything off except the background and this extra part here. So this is the one that was pink. So to get this back onto the edges of the pattern, we're going to put a mark in each of these corners, duplicate the layer, snap it over to this side and then snap this one over to that side and now those are back in their position if I turn the sketch on you'll see those are there over the top of the pink parts so let's merge those two together and erase these parts up here now we can turn our flattened pattern group on and with this pattern it does make a difference which layer you have on top because we've got some of the stems coming out from underneath our flowers in the extra group we need to make sure that they are underneath like that so don't flatten these two together until you've checked that you've got your extra group underneath the main group there so once you've checked that part on this pattern you can flatten those two and then we're going to duplicate this around to the other parts of the canvas so we'll duplicate it and snap it up why didn't I just grab one of them not both and then snap this up there into the corner with your orange lines there duplicate and drag that up and over to the right and then do the same into the two bottom corners and then we could go ahead and merge these top four together erase those marks in the middle and the ones on the bottom 
can erase those corner ones and then merge those two together and that is now our finished pattern tile. All the brushes I'm using here today are from my Pattern Maker Canvas and Brush Set which you can find on Etsy. I'll put links for everything I've used in the description and you can get 10% off everything in my Etsy store if you're a newsletter subscriber. Thank you for watching, I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial and I can't wait to see your finished patterns over on Instagram. Don't forget to tag me at Becky Flaherty so that I can see them and share them in my stories. If you've got any questions at all, let me know in the comments. All the links for everything I've used here are in the description. And if you want to see more videos like this every week, then make sure you subscribe here on YouTube. Have fun, stay creative, and I will see you next time.